Government at risk of missing an opportunity with key sexual harassment changes. Sex discrimination commissioner. Someone is drawing a really good six-figure salary in that bloat position. Just remember, this is where your tax dollars are going. You know, Sex Discrimination Commissioner Kate Jenkins says the federal government is at risk of missing an opportunity to overhaul key laws in its response to her landmark Respect at Work report after it said it wouldn't fully adopt all legislative changes. Shouldn't adopt any of them, really. Like These guys are just trying to tank your whole economy. Prime Minister Scott Morrison and Attorney General uh, Michaela Cash revealed the long-awaited response to the Respect at Work report on Thursday, saying they uh, agreed uh, or noted all 55 recommendations. Yeah, noted. Now, that's the perfect way, because is that they always scream that you're dismissing them, so you just tell them, I have received your uh, your input and I have noted it. Now, let's move on. Yeah, the report is released publicly on in March of last year. Well, Ms. Jenkins welcomed the government's acceptance of our recommendations in full or in principle. She said it was a missed opportunity to shift from compla a complaints-based system that puts a heavy burden on victims to one where employers must proactively stamp out sexual harassment and create safe workplaces. Yeah, this is what they want. They want like 1984 levels of thought control. Now, this is the shit we have here in America where um, th there was that case where a, a two college students, a man and a woman, were getting frisky. A third party was offended on the woman's behalf and reported the guy. And uh, he he got reamed by the star chamber. And, and even even his girlfriend was campaigning for him, saying he did nothing wrong. Uh, but the school was having none of it. Uh, I think she actually had to sue the school herself on her boyfriend's behalf. That's the system they want here. How heavy of a burden is it to just fucking report somebody? It's obviously not that heavy of a burden because these fuckers file false reports all the goddamn time. You, you can't fucking tell me it's a, some heavy burden. Now, over the 15 legislative changes Jenkins recommended, the government has agreed to do just seven of the reforms in full, stopping short of key changes to the Sex Discrimination Act, where the government has the power to act. Yeah, Australia's a lost cause. They may not have jumped all the way off the bridge yet, but th they'll do it later. The government supports the express prohibition of sexual harassment and will expand the scope of the Sex Discrimination Act to cover politicians, judges, and state public servants. Yes! Now the biggest creepers! are finally going to be eaten by this shit. The same politicians that uh, signed on with this ideology when they thought it could benefit them are now going to be uh, on the receiving end of the monster they created. This is a good idea. Force the fucking politicians to live under the same system as the rest of us. It will also change the Fair Work Act to include sexual harassment as serious misconduct and clarify that it is a valid reason for sacking someone. This new uh, reason for dismissal has been enthusiastically welcomed by employer groups. Let me just tell you why. Employers, th they appreciate anything that makes it easier for them to fire someone, no matter what it is. Like, oh, you mean that now we have another reason we can get rid of someone without having to go through fucking months of legal issues? Hell yeah, sign me up. Senator Cash said uh, the, the positive duty for employers already existed under work health and safety laws. Yeah, now that's actually an, another problem in, in most Western countries. Because uh, some tragedy happens. A bunch of politicians uh, push through some bullshit law while emotions are high. And then a couple of weeks later, everyone finds out there's already like 10 identical laws on the books that aren't even enforced. This is actually why I don't take it too seriously when a new law gets passed in the U.S. Because uh, it, it's usually the situation I just described. There are already laws that take that into account, whatever the new thing is doing, and they're, they're just forgotten and not enforced. So as soon as the public outrage wears off, they'll be forgotten and not enforced again. You know, we want consistency and we want to reduce complexity. So we're going to now look at how you could implement that in the Sex Discrimination Act, but not make the system more complex and not confuse people as to where to go. Makes sense, but you're already uh, too far gone in my opinion.
You know, Miss Jenkins was not convinced. Yes, yeah, this professional victim needs to keep the grift going. It will be a miffed opportunity to not include a positive duty to take reasonable and proportionate measures to eliminate sexual harassment in the Sex Discrimination Act. I am happy to ask if the government, with the evidence provided to the National Inquiry as uh, they further ask F this recommendation. So remember what I was saying earlier. The best way to fight back is to use their own bullshit laws against them. If you're a man and you're the victim of sexual discrimination and harassment at work, especially at the hands of a woman, take them to court. The only way you can get them to ease off on the bullshit is to make them uh, not exempt from the same bullshit. Like I keep saying, censors only support censorship when they believe it's going to be them censoring other people. But the moment other people censor them, now suddenly they're anti-censorship freedom fighters. So you want to turn these Cretans into freedom fighters? Censor them. The Respect at Work report notes that the uh, WHS regime is uh, usually more focused on physical harm than psychological harm. Oh, God. So now they're writing laws because some idiot's feelings were hurt. Psychological harm. That translates to feelings. And the Human Rights Commission already has the expertise to deal with sexual harassment complaints. It says the two positive duties would be complementary and work in a mutually reinforcing way. No, it's just going to add more bullshit laws. University of Sydney workplace culture expert Catherine Lumby said Miss Jenkins wouldn't have recommended the change if the existing regime was working. Oh, yeah. Well, we already have laws that are being ignored and not enforced. So clearly the way to fix this is to put another duplicate law in place that will also be ignored and not enforced. Uh, there might be uh, health and safety laws, but they're not working because we know the rates of sexual harassment and even sexual assault in the workplace are outrageous, she said. Uh, no. You want to know why the rates are outrageous? Because uh, even when a hoax is proven to be a hoax, it still counts as what it was reported as. So all these hate crime hoaxes that have been happening in America for the past like five years, they still count as hate crimes on the statistics. That's why they appear higher than they are. Actually, go watch Terrence Pop video, uh, the the uh, the alt right boogeyman. He goes into a lot of details about how these fuckers manipulate the statistics to to and and they do it with crime as well to pin leftist crimes on alt right Nazis. This goes to the heart of Kate Jenkins' report. We need to bolster those laws and we need to take the onus off whammons to do the reporting. Yep, that's right. So Islam was fucking right. Let's just put them in burqas to take the onus off of them having to deal with men and dressing them with their eyes. Let's segregate them away from men to, to protect them from predatory men. This is unironic at this point. Islam is what they want. Let's just give it to them. If that sort of thing is being watered down, then I think it's outrageous and the very clearly our politicians still have uh, not got what, what Whammons marched about. <laughs> oh, my God. If you are in the position to isolate yourself when this all collapses, get, start getting ready now. If you're not, start getting in that position now if you can. This is not going to end well. Yeah, these all these Western countries are going to completely collapse at this rate. Once China and Russia start pushing back when they realize how fucking pussified the West is now, it's, it's going to be game over. And nor did the government accept the need to introduce a stop sexual harassment order. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, why don't you just introduce a stop gun violence order? Hey, criminals, we order you to stop shooting people. Instead, it has opted to clarify that existing stop bullying orders are available in the context of sexual harassment. The government is aiming to include significant funding in May's budget uh, and put legislation to Parliament by the end of June. It will also boost indoctrinational resources, uh, data gathering, and research to complement the legal changes. And of course, completely coincidentally, the research is either going to give them the results they want or it's never going to see the light of day. 
You know, Mr. Morrison was op- also open to an advertising campaign similar to the Stop It at the Start ads aimed at reducing domestic violence. Holy shit. These are fucking NPCs. They are easily programmed by the media, so they assume everyone else is too. How many of you listening to me right now have uh, like no you've had the urge to like just bitch slap somebody and like oh wait but i saw on an ad that bitch slapping people is wrong so i'm not gonna do it fuck no if you ultimately decide not to do it it's probably because you're you decided to think and went yeah i don't want to deal with the cops for the rest of my life it's not worth it it all starts with disrespect. He said, we've got to be careful in our society that we don't allow the reservoir of respect to drain, and I fear it is. If only these idiots had some self-awareness. Yes, there is a lack of respect towards men. And when men aren't given respect, guess what? They stop reciprocating as well. Like, all right, I'm not, I'm not going to give it to you if you're not going to give it to me. Yeah, that's why so many men are checking out. It's not fucking worth it. it it's amazing how many people don't understand that, uh, at least when it comes to these petty victimless crime laws, the only reason anyone even pretends to follow them is because they don't want to go to jail. But you know, as soon as the cops aren't watching, they, they don't give a fuck. Oh, he wants bipartisan support for the legislative changes. Ah, bipartisan in today's political climate. And it's kind of hard to do when the other side have made clear that they view us as literal Nazis. So uh, if the left works with the right, then they're technically working with Nazis. Maybe we could do that to get them canceled. You know, the opposition front uh, bencher Christina Keneally said the announcement was a good first step, but contained little detail. It doesn't have any funding. It doesn't have any legislation. It doesn't have a reporting mechanism. Maybe that's the conservatives' plan, is to just not do anything and wait for this to go away. So independent MP Zali Stegall called on the government to stop a bill, or to adopt a bill she has already she already has before Parliament, drafted in consultation with Ms. Jenkins and the Law Council, which removes exemptions for MPs and judges. Now, this I would be 100% for. Yeah, we, uh, we cannot have these fucking politicians being exempt from the bullshit they force on us. All the politicians, judges, lawyers, all the way up to the very top. If they don't like it, they need to get rid of it for the rest of us too. Yeah, it creates a general prohibition on sexual harassment and bans aiding and abetting it. Oh my God. So this is, uh, if something happened and you were within five miles of it, you're guilty now too. Now, Ms. Stegel says uh, this la- last change would effectively create a positive duty on employers. This is a great way. To get employers to leave Australia, by the way. This is something that the left never seems to understand. They keep making it more and more difficult for employers. Employers are just either going to leave or shut down completely. But then again, these are the same people that are making things more and more difficult for men. And then they're surprised when men aren't really as addicted to pussy as they thought they were. Like, wow, I I thought men would just uh, keep bending over no matter what we did because they needed a hit of that pussy. But, wow, they're going herbivore. They're going MGTOW. They have no interest in women. Holy shit. How did this happen? This is not something that's far left, uh, that's left field or controversial. This has come from sound legal submissions of what amendment needs to happen. No, that's a blatant lie, but different topic. She said, uh, adding that after waiting for more than a year for the respect work response, the government shouldn't delay further. The Greens also have a bill ready to go to make the recommended changes. Business groups said it was vital employers be given the powers to sack sexual harassers, but cautioned against adding further complexity to anti-discrimination laws. Yep, so employers are all for uh, another reason to fire someone with no consequences to them. But if then they had an additional responsibility, like, oh, you have to, even if the woman doesn't report anything, you have to be offended on her behalf. Yeah, that, that'll just make him leave. Australian Chamber of Commerce, uh, oh, that's another type of cock, huh? And Industry Acting Chief Executive Jenny Lambert cautioned that adding overlapping and complex legal resources uh, or recourses risks detracting from rather than advancing prevention of sexual harassment. Australian industry group uh, head uh, Innes Willox 
said some proposals could put employers at risk of having multiple penalties or payouts imposed for the same instances of harassment. Oh, at the very end, you caught it. That's the point of a lot of this. The government wants to be able to send multiple bills to businesses. That This is another way they extort money. Oh man, I am so excited to tell you guys right now that finally, after about a year of build-up and shilling, we have launched Blade Devil on Indiegogo, and so far it is doing so well thanks to awesome people like you. If you haven't backed it yet, then please check the links in the description and check out Blade Devil on Indiegogo. You will not be disappointed. Looking forward to seeing you there.